Welcome back to Pole Barn Garage, where today we're working on this stubby Ford one-ton truck. Well, technically it's average. What we have here is a 78, I think, Ford truck that's been lopped off in the middle, and it was used in a trailer park to move trailers around forever. Now, my buddy gave me this for free, and that is its only redeeming quality. Inside of this bad boy, we've got lots of mouse nests, We've got a B&M ratchet shifter because clearly it's a race racing machine. Oh yeah, see we've got cassette player, Peterbilt fan, another fan. Is that a radar detector? Why would you need that? We have a whirly do light on the roof. We've got a custom bed, custom mud flaps. We have every single trailer hitch ever conceived of by man. Three receiver hitches, whatever these are, and a fifth wheel. Is that a goose deck or a fifth? Whatever. This baby's got an air tank on it here for airing up tires. Got gas in it. Ooh. Oh, man. That is straight varnish. The floor is deleted. That's just the floor mat. This used to be a one ton truck, but now with the shortened wheelbase, I'd say it's more like a. Uh, six ton truck a push bumper on it no date on the tag under the hood my buddy told me that uh, this was a 351 or a 400 i haven't even looked under here uh, this is a 460 it's got an elbrock performer 460 in on it got a holly on her we got fancy plug wires look at that one it's got a coil in it for style does it roll i guess we'll find out huh Water pump rolls great. Doesn't seem like it wants to roll. Absolutely is milkshaked. Look at that. Lots of water in the oil. It's not looking real good. You know, I'm thinking this thing might have been worth the low, low price of zero. I got the old double barrel breaker bar on here. Oh, dude, it's fine. I just couldn't get it by hand. It's a little crody, but not that bad. Let's throw a battery at it and just see if we can get her to pop off. How about that? All right. Looks like every farm truck I've ever had. Look at these connections. Yeah, there we go. Okay, well it's not on fire yet. It's a good sign, it's a good sign. I think we all know the answer to this already. You know the answer to this, JD? Yes, it's going to be terrible. Hmm. Yes, shocking, right? <laughs> Nobody would have ever guessed that this fuel tank might be junk, but let's, let's take a look. Um, Here's the drop. Oh. Ah. Okay, so let's not use this. I know everybody's surprised, everybody's shocked to learn that this gas tank is junk. So we need to uh, disconnect the fuel line, for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's junk. I'm trying to get this fuel line off. I forgot how much I enjoy doing this on a 385 series engine where they put everything on top of it. Yeah. Oh man, there's gas in it, all right. Look at that. Not much, but some. Yeah, I think we made the right call there, man. JD will crank. Let's just see if it'll spin first. Okay. Oh, come on, too easy. All right, hit it. Wow. Well, that was tough. Yep. Let's go home now. <laughs> the Jag tank. You gotta mount this securely somewhere. Oh, that looks safe. We are gonna upgrade our safety here and use some aluminum line, mostly just because I'm out of rubber hose. We will use this aluminum line and run it from the boat tank that I've installed on the back. We'll actually run it on the frame and, you know, maybe it'll be safe. There's this convenient hole right here. Yes. Oh, yeah. This is how confident I am. I know nothing about this truck other than it went <laughs> That's good enough for me. Why does everything I buy have running boards? These are just strategically placed in such a way to be a pain in my ass. Make sure it's not under the suspension or anywhere it'll get pinched. I was trying to run it along the frame and you can see the fuel pump. It's probably right above your head. Yeah, so that's where we gotta go. If you can feed it up here, I can. I can grab the rest. Nice. Okay, I think uh, that might be enough. I'm hooking up the fuel line now. Jay, has it got any transmission fluid? Oh, yeah, let me check. 
Um, no. <laughs> uh, like a teeny tiny little bit. You want to go grab a couple quarts? I'm sure it's going to need it. Yeah. We're just going to assume that the mechanical pump is going to work great. Top her off. Well, that's going to be a trick, isn't it? Yeah. It's almost like a motorhome dipstick. Yeah, it's very long. We just want to put something in there so we don't run the pump dry. If she fires off. I mean, when she fires off. No problem on her own. Do we dare? Yes. Oh! <gasps> Some, actually. We Wait. should top that off. It might have brakes. What? Let's top it off. And these are now new. Rebuilt. That master cylinder is hardly even rusty. All right, you crank. We'll run her off brake clean, see if she starts to pull anything up. Oh, it's starting to pull some fuel. Hit her again. Run it. I think it's in gear. It moved. Oh yeah, that's definitely in first gear. Pull up on the T and yeah. shove it forward. I don't know what that was. That might have been, uh, give it a little gas, see what happens. It runs great. I know. All right, let's check the transmission fluid. Uh, kill it. Got a little fuel leak up here. We got both the accelerator pump is leaking, and uh, we can't really do anything about that right this second, but we can at least fix this one. I say we do that. Yeah. And uh, we'll just stuff a rag under that. <laughs> Sometimes they'll swell back up and seal. There's that on our brand new fuel filter there. It seemed to be flowing fuel, and that's good enough for me. Now we'll fix the accelerator pump. So, there, see? We've turned the top of the engine into a malt of cocktail now. Hmm. As I suspected, it has no coolant whatsoever. I have this half of this bucket full of used antifreeze. We'll dump that in here so it can be injected directly into the crankcase. Now that we've ran it, you should pull that oil dipstick. Oh my god. <laughs> it, that's really good oil. Oh my god, this thing's junk. <laughs> oh, that motor's trashed. Holy, I've never seen that before. Yeah, that's milkshake. <laughs> uh, she got a head gasket out of her for sure. Now that we know that this thing's a hunk of crap, might as well try to drive it on five flat tires. Well, <laughs> it, has, it has brakes. This is for the blinky light, I think. What do you suppose is going on here, huh? <gasps> it works? Yes, there's no light though. Hang on. Maybe. Probably needs a bulb. Got tunes? No. All right. Well, I'll see you later. Okay.
Watch this. That's where the, it wasn't the tire that... <laughs> I knew I'd been saving all these junk tires for something. I think they'll go great on that. Let's go yank some wheels off of it, and then I'll try to mount them up on my antique tire mounting machine. This thing's got some huge lug nuts. One and sixteenth inch. I was really hoping this thing would come off the bead. It would have made my life much easier. Ah, I don't know if my adapter is big enough for these... Jesus. <laughs> it's like a semi truck. No, it has to go the other way. Oh, is it heavy? Uh, yeah, a little. I don't have any way to keep it from spinning, you know. It's going great. Oh, no. Hey, that just saved me three bucks right there. Wow. You know, I, I don't think that's how you're supposed to do it. We did one. See? That just saved me six dollars. Okay, <laughs> come on, tire. <laughs> oh my god. Oh shoot, what are you there? That's one less we gotta do, maybe. I definitely don't trust that thing. That means we only gotta do two more. Also, it's poured like a gallon of gasoline out of it from somewhere. Oh, that's fine. There. Nice. We're gonna need something a little beefier than that. Rock them back and forth. They are left-handed thread. L for left-handed thread. Duh, dummy. I didn't know they were left-handed thread on this. Yeah. Oh, that's a good tire. Right yeah. Pull of the jack. We're just gonna leave that there. Yep, that's fine. Uh. Well, at least these have already got some of the bead off. Oh, that's some good suspension. As you can see here, they have literally just cut the truck in half and butt welded it back together. This is going to break in half if it ever experiences any kind of torsional load on it. So we won't do anything about that. Well, we can drop the oil and see what mysterious fluids come out. Oh no. Whoa. Oh no. Oh no, she's bad, bad. Oh man. The milkshake. I just happen to have a Ford filter in stock, so we'll go ahead and change that out while we're in here, I suppose. Oh god. Oh. Oh, this thing is screwed, dude. Well, that's a waste of a brand new oil filter. This thing is full. Literally full to the brim. That's a, uh, I think it's a 12 quart or something like that. 16 quarts. That was way over full of water. But I might, I have a, I got a solution. Well, first off, we're going to dump all the extra quarts of oil I have left over into it until we fill it with fresh oil. We're going to add some of that mystery stuff I got from Minnesota. Huh? Oil treatment. That's going to fix it. But the secret sauce is right there. That's John Deere tractor cooling system repair. It says it fixes engine blocks. So what the hell? Let's try it. I mean, what do we have to lose? It's snake oil? Maybe. Let's see what this stuff looks like. Mmm. It's not that bad. No, I've seen worse. It's probably just like motor honey. I, I probably will buy a task even. Oh yeah. Oh, we gotta drain some of this. Why don't you go get a bucket and we can put it under here. Okay. To drain out a little bit of coolant. Well, the petcock doesn't work, but the uh, screwdriver and the radiator hose trick does the trick. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's gonna, oh, that? <laughs> that's gonna fix this for sure. You know, I have some K-Seal too. Let me dump some of that in there as well. We'll double up on her with some K-Seal. Huh? I've used this stuff with a lot of success, actually. There. Now, 
Oh, I didn't shake it well enough. Well, we'll just put that in there. Yeah. Chocolate milk? Uh, more like yeah. chocolate oh. pudding and or diarrhea. Top her back off. Let it sit here and run until it fixes itself and or catches on fire. All right, now we gotta let it run for 20 minutes while it's pouring gasoline out of it inside of my garage. I'm not, I mean, what could possibly go wrong? It's, it's healing right now. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, we're steaming out of the radiator cap. She's holding 190 degrees, and it's still a milkshake. Fix yourself. Heal. Be healed. I'm going to pull this pile out of here so it doesn't burn my shop down, and uh, I guess we'll check in on it tomorrow. All right, well, we're back out here today. going to pull her back in the shop. Figured I'd pull the dipstick and see what's settled down in the pan. It looks clean. It's perfectly clean oil. I don't know, man. I think we might have fixed it, J.D with the miracle fixes the john deere <laughs> she did the trick fun while it lasted. News! It's f***ed! <laughs> okay, well, we don't have to worry about anything anymore because this thing is junk. Let's fire it up. Accelerator pump's bad. It'll run once you get it running, but it won't squirt any fuel in it without the Venturi effect. That thing is horrible. There's nothing pleasant about that thing at all. Well, I rolled it out last night because it leaked gallons upon gallons upon gallons of gasoline all over the floor. And uh, now it won't run. Fuel pump finally died. We kind of knew we were living on a part of time with that. So now I get to change it out here. Thankfully, I have the old fuel pump off of the Ranchero. It's a 429, this is a 460. It's the same thing. Oh, I got the bolts out of it. So that's a start. They've, of course, glued the fuel pump into place. You should never do that, and this is why. Ah. I got it. They've put a clothes pit on the fuel line to prevent vapor lock. The old wives' tale is that you put a clothes pit on your metal fuel line to the carb, and that fixes vapor lock. Somebody left their cottage cheese in here. Also, it's working. Hmm. That's the bypass hole where it was leaking its fuel out of right there. I do have a job for you, yep. and or Jesse. So, if you follow me back here, this is the fuel cell out of the Ranchero when we got it. And there's nothing wrong with it really, it's aluminum. But what has happened is, I'm gonna get my hands, yes. <laughs> so if you look, <laughs> If you look in there, you can see that foam that's in there. Yeah. That's anti-slosh foam. And I suspect it's probably crumbly and falling apart. Find an edge of it. Yeah, I mean, feel it. It gets a little crunchy over on this side. Found the crunchies. 
Uh, yes. I'm just gonna keep my hand down in this sketchy hole and see what happens. Oh yeah, that's shit crunchy. <laughs> yeah. Solid. Good thing we got this out. Might have been what he was talking about. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, they're kind of made of not oh. Actually, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Good work. I could see inside there. It looks clean. Yeah. I mean, it's probably no worse than most of the stuff we were on anyway. Yeah. Then we're just gonna have to figure out where to mount it back here. Fortunately. We have the organic bed, so it's a little easier to screw her down, you know. Uh, but while you do that, I think we're just going to go ahead and replace the whole fuel system. I'm going to swap out the carb for this 500 Edelbrock I had laying around, just because. And we'll throw a fuel filter on it, change that other hose, fuel pumps on it, and then maybe it'll drive into the garage. There we go. She's got a phenolic spacer on it. You know, this thing was a straight up race car, basically. Obviously that 500 Edelbrock is gonna be way too little for this, but that's fine. For, for our purposes of it's never gonna leave this property, that's gonna be just fine. It's gonna need a long screw. Yeah, really long. <laughs> Look at there. Oh, yeah. That's fixed now. You're welcome for my genius. There we go. That'll be yeah. perfect. That'd be, ah! that'd be nice now. Now I still need to shim it up just a smidge. Shim. Well, let me grab a shim. Right. We've got lots of them. So many shims. There's actually... See? Oh, yeah. They're all over it. Two shims. Yeah. Why are you splitting a piece of wood? Because we need the height and not the length, and it sounded fun. Hmm. Okay? Okay. Okay. You want me to split that? If you like. Oh, well, you got oh, it. Oh, we've got it. Don't fine. All right. Yeah, we're yeah. fine. You're going to be like, why did you give the girl a power tool? So we're going to screw a whole bunch on this board to screw it to this wood. And then we're going to put the washer, washer screw here to hold it all on. I found a piece of used heater hose that I'll, I'll use to hook up to the fuel cell. That'll work great. I mean, look at that craftsmanship. Right that is there. brilliant. Mm -hmm. Those drywall screws are rated for yeah. that. NHRA approves of that, no Almost. problem. We, we have all our fingers still. Almost as much as they approve of, of this to plug the, the return there. See, that's a shock mount, a piece <laughs> of heater hose, and a couple of used <laughs> clamps. I just want to point out, every single thing that we've done to this so far has cost zero. It's all spare parts. Truck was free, right? So if we can literally just make it functional with stuff I had laying around, as far as I'm concerned, that's a free vehicle. Yep. Let's try to keep it that way. Yeah, there we go. Fuel lines hooked up, totally safe. I plugged the vent with whatever this is. And uh, now I believe we can probably throw some fuel in it. Put gas in and see if it comes out. It's like build up race car. I got a primer up, so I'm gonna have JD crank on it. We'll just get her running and see if she takes off. Hit it. Hit it. I'm going to switch the vacuum advance over to full vacuum all the time. Try to give it just a little extra. Go fire it up, Jay. Okay. Try to give it a little extra initial timing without me actually doing anything. Well, let's see if we can 
get the rings to kind of free up a little bit. See nothing. I've done it again, haven't I? Go hard. Damn it. Yeah. I don't know if it stubs his tire, but it's certainly piece of tire. Assorted pieces of tire. Oh, oh they're not hot. They're not stubbies. Oh, those they'll are be just fine. Stubby. Well, we're trying to figure out what to do with it next. Well, the only obvious answer is to paint it, of course. I have about a quart of olive drab here. That may not be quite enough to do the whole truck. So I have about a pint of bright ass lime green here uh, this is base coat which is an acrylic urethane and that is acrylic urethane all of drab so theoretically if we dump the brighter green in there it should brighten up that green in here and they should mix together <laughs> the point of no return. that's all all in on this stuff Ooh, poop it's poop it has turned into poop I don't think it really it, changed the no, color at all. It didn't. It, it just, just extended it. it. Hell yeah. All right. While we look through the rest of my paint stash to see what else I have, we'll let this kind of just stew in this can here, and we'll see what happens. It may turn into goo. Kind of a waste, but I've got like almost a full pint of this woodland green metallic. We'll pour it in. Maybe it'll get some sparkles in it. Wow. Ooh, this is very pretty-ish. It turns into poop again. Poop, more poop. No sparkle. I think that's more than enough to paint her though, so. We're good now. Saved 50 bucks. We'll give old Sergeant Stubbs a bath outside of the pressure washer, get this mold off of it. Well, then we'll pull it back in and then, then paint it. Sergeant Stubbs has officially drip dried, so we're going to mask him off and uh, I paint it, I guess, for reasons. Well, Stubbs is all masked up, ready for action. Now, let's get the mystery concoction going here. Let's see if it has turned into goo, and I'm actually going to put on gloves. So, is it going to rain? It sounds like thunder. Dude, awesome. Every time I paint something, it summons rain. Uh, no, it did not turn into goo. So here's where we have to make a decision, right? What do we, at what ratio do we add a catalyst to it? Because obviously we have no idea what this even is. I'm gonna go with four to one. That's gonna be playing it kind of safe. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be less paint to activator ratio. What is this activator for? It's for some clear coat I bought. Technically for urethane. That's technically urethane. Therefore, it's gonna work. Four parts of the green to one part of this. We're gonna look for bubbles and stuff as I pour that in. See if it's reacting. It is. 
it is reacting. So this may not work. There's a chemical something happening there, you see. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are science terms. Okay, so that's too thick to spray. So we're going to reduce it. It's going to kind of eyeball a reducer. We want to get it so when I pull this stick out, I just want it to just run in one nice clean line off the end of the stick. And I also don't want it to turn into goo. Thinking about it turning into goo, which paint gun do I want to destroy? <laughs> it's going to let that kind of chill there for a minute or two. Hopefully it gives me a warning sign that it's a uh, junk. So we're not done yet. If this doesn't turn into goo, the next hurdle will be, will it even dry? That's another problem. See, when you're a cheap bastard like me, you always run into problems like that. And instead of spending 50 bucks, you go, huh, I don't have to do that. I'll just make my own. Will it go down the strainer? Hmm? Yeah. Kinda. That's a really bad sign. Yeah. You generally want that to go down the strainer. Let's see what the hell happens. that we didn't prep the surface at all, and that was key. You see, the truck was free, therefore, my level of carrying lower. In fact, it has become so low, I literally don't care at all. So, we got any reaction going on? Yes. The entire thing is nothing but fish eyes and wrinkles. You know what that tells me? This is house paint. This white, that's latex. <laughs> that would be why. of this stuff, it'll start to build on top of itself and we can probably get rid of some of that fish eye. Not that I really give a shit, but part of the beat has a little bit of professionalism when it comes to paint. And I'm a little embarrassed. Not really. I have no shame. It really likes the moss. Look at that. Huh? It blends right in. Can't even tell. Girl shine stuff right there. I'll try for one more coat on everything and see if we can't camo some of this uh, fish eye stuff. If I lay it on nice and wet, I should be able to melt the under layer of the paint into the layer I'm spraying now and it should kind of meld together and cover up the fish eyes. The paint's still compromised, but it should look better. You gotta spray it like this at it from a distance. You can get some of those fish eyes filled in. Stuff dries right away, doesn't it? Yeah. It's pretty good. I wonder if I shouldn't have gone eight to one on the ratio. It dries fast. It's not a bad thing though, considering, you know, a death storm has moved in. One more coat, just because I have it. Look at that. Yeah, it's perfect painting weather. Hmm. Well, stubby looks pretty tough. 
He's a mean fighting machine now. And a wet one, but thankfully this paint just seems to dry instantaneously, so it didn't do any harm. Well, let's go ahead and put some new wheels on it. Got to get that custom grill painted. <laughs> you know, this whole truck has been rebuilt in like the last two hours. It's amazing. What do people wait for when they build cars? One final touch here. Got to make sure these headlights, you know, whenever we're going out to battle in old Sergeant Stubbs, we don't want them shattering, you know. So I don't know. It's a pretty tough looking little unit, isn't it? <laughs> and you're also going to paint the uh, shark mouth. See what happens. Mm. A fender with tractor paint and Dollar Tree paint brushes. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, there's the black. And then you are going to help me. You're going to paint these headlight bezels black okay. in there, as well as the sides of the bed, maybe. Or whatever yeah. you want to back there. I'm going to try to put a bulb in the whirly do light. I don't know what kind of bulb this thing takes, but let's find out. Well, that's a pretty serious looking bulb there. However, they also don't look like they're bad. Let's see, the bolts get their power from this contact plate here. I'm going to assume it needs to be touching it in order to make power. And this contact plate is adjustable with these nuts. We've got to back this guy up and let these brushes touch that contact plate. Then the whirly do light should work. We may not even have to put a bulb in it. Now well, they have this handy bit of lamp cord strung in. Yes. Is that both lights? Yeah. Just needed those brushes to make contact and he's good to go. Let's put a toggle switch in it so we can use that at will. Very nice. Oh my. Uh, yeah, it's very thin and runny. Tractor paint letting me down. It, well, JD's is the same way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, all right. Good luck. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need it actually. Real professional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm pretty much a pen striper. <laughs> We'll see what it looks like. I bet it looks fine. Fine will be a good enough word if it. Have you seen the fine. rest of this vehicle? It, it the motor's blown up in it. This is what you call a waste of time. <laughs> I think to round things off here, I'm going to put these lights from Oxbeam on. That's Oxbeam. And they are um, huge. Those are like the sun. We're going to have two entire stars on the front of the vehicle. And the cool thing about the Oxbeam stuff is the wiring harnesses and everything are all ready to go. They're like, you just plug it in and you're done. Uh, you know, granted, it'd be a little sloppy, but it's fine for this it means I'll have these lights on at no time. Most people would have to worry about drilling holes or something like that to mount their lights on. However, you know, we we're fortunate enough that we could just shoot a couple of huge deck screws into this and uh, that that's going to that work. Shoot these right into this 2x6. Oh, 2x8, sorry. Perfection has been achieved. Yes. Love it. Uh-oh, I split the bumper. It's not a problem you run across very often, but when you do, it's a real problem. Yeah, our bumper seems to have termites. Yeah, building your car out of wood does have its downsides. I found a relatively less termite-eaten section of the bumper, and I was able to get a lag bolt into it. But now we'll go ahead and secure our uh, the sides here where you're supposed to be able to adjust it. And You know, I eyeballed it, and uh, yeah, that's a perfect 90 degrees to the front of the vehicle. Shoot a couple of these self-tappers in. So all you do is just plug it in, hook it up to the battery, and you're done. Like so. And all you gotta do is hook it up to your battery, right here. Right to that, see that really good connection right there? See that, Jay? Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. And right there, we should be able to test them. Yep. Holy sh It's like really bright. Weird. It's like 
Oh my God, they put off some heat too. You could fry eggs on the front of this thing. Well, while I cut this up through there, I got the kill counts and the paintings that uh, Jess put on there. And JD. Yeah, and JD. Very important. It's killed one entire squirrel. And a deer. And a pedestrian. Do not cross means do not cross. There we go. Professionally installed that with the zip tie to the windshield wiper switch. Perfect. Look at that. Boom. How do you do? And as well, I have also attached the whirly light. Zip tied it to the dash. Decorate this fuel cell. Gotta make a regulation, you know. Just made this nice stencil. That looks pretty badass. And I checked the oil again, and it hasn't really like raised the level of the oil. It may be all right. There's only one way to find out though, and that's basically to go run the absolute dog piss out of it and see if we can break it. Let's go.
This is all oil blow by, blowing out of the engine onto the windshield. That's how good this engine is. It can't even hold oil in it. It's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I'll give it that. It's just pretty bad is all. This thing's got to have like a 513 gear in it. That's third gear. That's like as fast as the truck goes. <laughs> save the tires, you know? I think they have died. We have arrived back at home. I was doing a cursory inspection of my tires here, and uh, I noticed that this one looked a little off. And it's flat. Uh, maybe it was always flat, I don't really know. But I think we might have blown her out. Yeah, it didn't really like that for some reason. That might have been why like one of the black marks was heavy and one was light. A little rubber. <laughs> Up inside there. <laughs> Anyway, I think that's going to do it for uh, this episode of Pole Barn Garage. Thanks, Jesse, for painting this thing up. Looks freaking great. What do I do with Sergeant Stubbs now? I don't know. I think the engine has healed, and only time will tell if we actually have to do anything to this. I don't want to, nor will I ever. So we'll run it until it dies. I think it'd be a great burnout competition vehicle, actually. Weirdly, I would have never thought it'd be that good at it. Maybe that happens someday when I have time, you know. I don't know, until then, it's actually a handy little truck to drive around here because it's so small. It fits in everywhere. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time on Pole Barn Garage. If you want to see more literally zero dollar budget vehicles like this, this is pretty, this is your place to do it right here. So. We'll see ya. Remember, we're the real budget YouTube channel.